Item number SCP-3303 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures As per the terms and conditions of the Vosbud Summit, the Foundation may not acquire any instances of SCP-3303 except by purchasing it from Marshall, Carter and Doc. Instances of SCP-3303 under Foundation control should be kept in the dedicated wine cellar at Site-48. If it is not feasible, any room with minimal lighting, a constant temperature between 7 to 18 degrees Celsius, and high humidity may be used until more permanent storage space becomes available. Access to SCP-3303 for testing requires permission from two personnel with level 4 clearance. Non-testing access requires approval from the site director. Description SCP-3303 is the collective designation for any champagne. In the strict sense of the word, for example, wine produced under the rules and regulations set by the Comite Interprofessional du Vende Champagne, produced by the Padilla, produced by the Patel Estate between 2002 and 2007. While SCP-3303 is physically and chemically unremarkable, roughly 3% of observers report that SCP-3303 is surrounded by a bright blue aura. SCP-3303 displays anomalous properties only under certain conditions. 1. SCP-3303 is being consumed by multiple individuals in an enclosed area, with allowances for doors, windows, etc. A ceiling appears to be required. All individuals present are consuming SCP-3303 at a rate no less than one glass per hour. 3. It is past sunset. Under these conditions, SCP-3303 induces a temporal dilation within the confines of the affected room. Time's rate of passage will increase asympathetically as sunrise approaches, allowing affected subjects to experience time at a greater rate than those outside. Any solids or liquids that reach the boundary of this effect will be transported across it instantly, preventing typical shearing effects. An unidentified process maintains ear pressure, ear composition, and temperature within the room. Consumption of SCP-3303 under the stated conditions has a stabilizing effect on the human body and mental state. Affected subjects will not... Okay, Affected subjects will not deviate substantially from the physical condition at the initiation of SCP-3303's effects. This includes an immunity to injury that has hindered attempts to identify the exact mechanism responsible. Subjects do not need to attend to standard biological functions, though they are capable of doing so in excess of what should typically be possible. Similarly, emotions and overall mental states are fixed in the state they were in at the initiation of anomalous effects, with the exception of changes resulting from alcohol intoxication. Of note is that, under these conditions, subjects left to their own devices will often continue to consume SCP-3303 as long as possible. In one case, a party of nine consumed the host's entire stock of 80 bottles in one night. History According to Patel Champagne records, the house was approached by representatives from Marshall Carter and Doc in December of 2000, who intended to acquire exclusive rights to distribute Patel Champagne's wine and oversee its production. Such a deal was made for 3 million euros. 
and production of champagne for MCND began in 2002, while SCP-3303 became known to the Foundation in 2003. An agreement was formed under which MCND retained the right to produce and sell SCP-3303 for five years and the Foundation was disallowed from accessing or observing the Patero state. In exchange, MCND took full responsibility for suppressing public knowledge of SCP-3303 and transferred several dangerous anomalous objects to the Foundation. MCND marketed Patero Champagne as a tool to enable parties and other social gatherings to last for an extended period of time, limited only by the supply of SCP-3303. It was sold exclusively to trusted clients. Estimated sales are believed to exceed 50 million euros over five years. In 2008, the Foundation examined the Patera State's records and vineyards. There was no evidence that any anomalous activity was occurring or continued to occur at the site. Employees were unaware that the champagne they were producing had any anomalous properties. The state's manager noted that, as part of the original agreement, MCND were permitted to bury a mummified human jawbone near the geographical center of the estate's vineyard. The jawbone was apparently retrieved by MCND personnel shortly prior to the Foundation's examinations.